Hello, hello everyone. This is a new format. I'm going on live. I hope you can hear me. I'll see if I can. Okay. Uh, I'll see if I can see uh, comments. This is something totally new. I have not seen uh, anything like that. But anyway, hi. Uh, I'm doing this from my MacBook Air. For the first time, maybe you've noticed I usually do it uh, through my phone. But today is uh, the eve of Latvian Independence Day. And I have not done my live video, so I was thinking I will talk about uh, history. And this is a topic that actually makes me feel somewhat vulnerable. But uh, recently I had a storytelling bootcamp where uh, I, <laughs> uh, so to say, caused people to feel vulnerable. And I was thinking, I need to be vulnerable myself. So history is uh, the topic that I feel uh, to talk, uh, what, what, that makes me feel vulner vulnerable uh, for two reasons. One is when I was uh, at school, and those of you who know, I, I uh, studied at school uh, before Latvia was independent during the Soviet times, and I hated history. And probably I hated the history um, because I knew that it was all fake. And uh, in the family, my, my parents were actually not very open. They, because our uh, family has uh, suffered quite a lot. So I didn't know many things, uh, but uh, every now and then I heard comments and I realized that it was all fake. When I started studying history, it was at the very beginning, the, the old history, the ancient history, that uh, seemed fascinating to me. But, uh, but of course, the uh, more recent period, and especially during the occupation, we had to learn the history, which uh, basically didn't make sense, it, which was against what my parents and my grandparents believed. Not that I heard a lot, I had to kind of like pull the information out of them after, like when I was already an adult. But, but anyway, what caused, uh, causes me talking about it for the first time um, on, uh, publicly is um, questions. I live in the United States, as you know, I, I come from Latvia, I lived in Latvia for the most of my life. I have been in the United States, this is the ninth year. Only and only now I start, uh, this is the first time uh, I'm going to talk about the history because I have a lot of questions. And uh, one question recently that popped up before the Veterans Day here in, the, in America was how, uh, how long has Latvia been independent? How long Latvia has been free? And I see that some people are watching. I, I wish I could see uh, comments because I would really like to have a, have a conversation. Maybe you can have an input, but uh, please do. Maybe I will later open the chat uh, through my phone because I don't see it on the screen, but uh, I'll just start uh, getting into the topic. So yeah, uh, so the, the question the, the question has been, how long has Latvia been independent? And uh, my answer to that question just recently was approximately 50 years. And uh, when now I would say that this is the uh, 103rd anniversary of the Latvian Independence Day. So it, it kind of doesn't make sense, right? The, the, the math doesn't add up. And of course, I get more questions about it. And then I have to explain things. And I also have Latvian language students who are also interested in, uh, in the history of Latvia. So I thought I'll just uh, come here and I would like to have uh, a conversation if I could figure out the phone. If not, I'll just go on and talk about the way I understand it and like in a very simplified way because I'm not a history professor by, um, by no means. And I also know that there, there might be something that I say that uh, cause conflicting uh, feelings uh, within some people. But that's okay. That's okay. Uh, we can all have uh, have those feelings. Anyway, so so why have I been saying that Latvia has been independent for approximately fifty years? You can actually do the math, although it's. Uh, I will explain why it's hard to to exactly tell uh, how long has Latvia been independent. Uh, so. Uh, officially, formally, tomorrow, it's going to be uh, the day when we celebrate the Latvian first, uh, uh, the anniversary 
uh, since the day Latvia was first proclaimed as an in independent republic. It was on November 18th, uh, 1918. Right, uh, but uh, uh, as concerns the uh, the Latvian Freedom Fighters Day, which is which we celebrated on November eleventh, uh, which was a, a week ago, uh, people uh, I remember when the Veteran Day uh, was here in America, uh, it, it's exactly the same day, November eleventh, and uh, November eleventh is celebrated or marked in many countries in the world and when i said that in latvia we also uh, mark this day and this is latvian freedom fighters uh, 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 remembrance day people think that it's uh, it also means that uh, it uh, we are marking the end of world war one but that is actually not uh, what latvians are marking uh, it's a day one year later and uh, if you are thinking freedom fighters and uh, one year later, which would be 1919, how does that make sense if Latvia, Latvia was declared independent uh, in November of uh, 1918? So that's what I'm going to explain to you uh, right now. But let's just back up for those people, for, for instance, who are in the United States, who don't know uh, even where Latvia uh, is located or who have studied history or in world history but have forgotten it and also haven't been interested uh, like I wasn't when I was a child when I was a student so uh, so this is a very simplified map of Latvia uh, but this is the map of Latvia as it is nowadays uh, so I will just show you what's what's here so here is Estonia it's it's a sister country of of Latvia and this is uh, Lithuania. And Latvia is kind of like in the middle, Estonia in the north, and Latvia is in the south. And here, uh, here is Russia. But Russia is, uh, here you see there's Belarus, but Russia extends up, up towards the uh, north, but also way down, way down in the south. So Latvia is a very, very small country. Uh, right now, uh, the population is below 2 million. And after World War uh, One, it was also uh, just around one one million something. Uh, don't hold me to the facts because, I, like I said, I'm not a historian. So, this is the Baltic Sea over here. Sweden is over here. Finland is over there. And uh, so, what what we also want to know that what what's uh, below here, down from uh, Lithuania, there's Poland, and then there's Germany. And then over there, there's Great Britain. So what uh, what happened in the world at the time of World War One? Just let like really really quickly back up, if you if you haven't for, uh, forgotten, there there were like in uh, in all wars there are like two opposing uh, forces that are fighting right and. Um, so the one force was called uh, the Central Powers, and it was uh, let me let me think it was Germany, Austria, Hungary, which uh, was uh, one empire at that time, and what else was it? Um, I'm thinking. Uh, Turkey, yeah, Turkey, yeah. So that's way, uh, way in the south, right? And uh, and uh, the opposing force was uh, called Allies, and that is uh, France, Italy, Great Britain, uh, Russia, Japan, and uh, from 1917 also the United States of America, right? So what what caused uh, what caused the World War One was a Serbian. Um, uh, Serbian nationalist who killed uh, who killed uh, the Archduke of uh, Austria Hungary and uh, of course then there were those allies and they started fighting and uh, soon all the continent was involved and uh, soon uh, we can say that entire the entire world was involved in in that very terrible conflict of World War one so the question is which uh, which side did Latvia take uh, during the World War one? And um, if you start thinking um, what I said previously, you can't really answer this question because there was no uh, country of Latvia. There was not, not, not such a thing as Latvia. There were people who spoke 
the Latvian language, right? But Latvian independence as a country, as a free republic, was declared only in 1918. Uh, in November, right? So before, what happened was there were all those struggles that uh, that tried to occupy the territory of of Latvia. Okay, so uh, uh, let's let's go back. So on on the uh, November eighteenth of nineteen eighteen, there there's there are there's a leader of Latvian peasant union, so to say. His name was Carlos Ulmanis, and he later became the first president of the Republic of Latvia. So he, he was the leader, and he, together with other, so to say, political uh, forces, there were bourgeois, and there were also socialists, and there were these uh, uh, peasant, peasants who formed the first government. But the first government uh, was so weak right after the World War One that uh, that uh, they didn't have uh, their own army, and it's very important for a free country to have their own army. There were like the biggest uh, unit was up here. There are three uh, towns. By the way, I wrote down the names of the towns. Valmiera is the town where I was born, and I lived there for for many years. And then Sigulda is town where I moved to uh, when I was uh, already an adult, the last uh, few years before I moved to the United States. And Cés is, is the town where there was the first unit of the Latvian army, and it consisted only uh, from of uh, two approximately 200 riflemen who were uh, who would if in case it was needed to, uh, to defend the, the free uh, Latvian country the country of Latvia and of course what happened was there were still all those uh, conflicting forces like Russia is on that side right and uh, German Germans who were uh, forced to move out they are over here on this side but really there were still people uh, left in Latvia right after the World War right and uh, what what also the uh, what happened during World War one was uh, in Russia for instance and in other countries there was this fight between uh, also the the monarchies that there were mon monarchists and and like in in Russia there were Bolsheviks basically socialists and uh, Bolsheviks won that fight and uh, therefore uh, the people who were uh, supporting monarchists, they were kind of like backing up. And where would they back up? They would back up uh, in, in other uh, neighboring territories, for instance, to Latvia. So, so there were some people uh, left from, from those who supported the monarchy, plus the Soviets, of course, they wanted to take take uh, back their power. So they were uh, also soon after Latvia, Latvia declared their independence, the Soviets are thinking, what is that? Like, wh no, we want to, we want to move in and we want to actually rule in, uh, rule this, this territory, right? That, that's something that they were used to. So, so they come back to Latvia and uh, now Latvia needs to figure out how to defend their new new country. So what happens in uh, in November already? They start coming back, and by the end of November they already come back. And here the new government needs to figure out what to do. And the most active people usually are uh, young people, right, and students. And there was a La University of Latvia, and students started uh, forming the instructor company, who would uh, eventually, who would eventually train uh, uh, military people, right. However, this cannot be done really, really quickly. So the the government, uh, the new government, provisional government, is pushed back to Liepāja, here, Liepāja. And this is the, the sh uh, shore of the Baltic Sea. Here is Ventspils, the, the harbor that uh, doesn't freeze. So this is also strategically uh, important, uh, important uh, territory for those who want to have this access to the port and to the country in general. So, so the, the new government is pushed back here uh, in Liepāja. 
And uh, what happens, all, if the Soviets come over, come across the entire country and take back Latvia, basically take away the freedom, right? And this, and uh, what, what do they do? They, they kill people, they torture people, they rape people. And, uh, and so they, they basically devastate. And, and, and uh, people who were left, uh, and especially men, uh, after the World War I, they, they, they uh, of course, are not happy with that. And they start uh, volunteering and joining the, the Latvian army. And that's how it's starting uh, gradually to grow. So Latvian army starts growing as, uh, although, uh, although Soviets are coming in. And, uh, so in January, here the new government starts thinking what to do because they see that the, the army is growing, people volunteer, and, and basically nobody wants to accept what's going on. So, so but, but they are so, so small and so weak, they think that, well, we need to, uh, to get uh, support from some, somebody. So they get support from uh, the Baltic Germans who are still, still in, in the country. So they form allies because the Baltic Germans, they had their own army unit and the, the new provisional Latvian government formed, uh, formed like a united uh, ally uh, army to fight the Bolsheviks. So Riga is the capital city, if I didn't mention, for, for those who, who don't know the Latvian territory. So this is strategically the most important place. The river, da uh, the biggest river is Daugava. That's why I draw it. So they form the, the uh, army together with the Baltic uh, Germans and they push back here and in May of, uh, uh, of uh, 1919 they finally they actually expel the Bolsheviks from from Riga they come, uh, get back <coughs> sorry so half a year has already uh, passed since the Latvian independence but uh, what happens here is Germans think Oh, okay, we got the, the Soviets out, uh, the Russians out, Germans think, hey, why don't we take this country? Why do we need to give them the freedom? So they turn their, their uh, arms against the Latvian government, Latvian soldiers, basically. And now Latvians not just have fought uh, the Soviets, now they have to fight the Germans. Uh, and what, what happens, though, at that time was uh, Estonia, of course, has a very similar destiny, very devastating uh, uh, history. So they come to help and also uh, support from the regional units. So, so they come, uh, come help here and they they manage to to actually take back Riga the capital city so so they uh, they win the battles here in Riga and Germans are uh, are supposed to back up and actually actually go go to this part of the country basically to the west and uh, and uh, and and uh, basically get out of the country they are not allowed to have the army unit anymore here but do you think that they agree with that? No, of course not. So they're thinking how to strengthen their, uh, their positions. And what happens, uh, what happens at that time, what happened to happen was that there was this, this guy uh, who was actually a uh, uh, commander. He was, uh, he was Russian. His name was uh, uh, Bermontavalov. So Bermontavalov, or I, I don't know how you pronounce it in English. So he uh, openly supported uh, Russian monarchy. So he had backed up from Russia and he, he was active in Latvia and uh, Lithuania. And so he, he's, uh, he wants to take the power of Latvia. And in October of 1919, he has a secret uh, meeting in Jalgava, this, this town uh, which is uh, south of Riga. So uh, uh, where he uh, talks people into taking uh, the power uh, over, taking the power. And uh, on uh, October the 8th, they go to Riga and they start attacks. And at that time, uh, what happens? Latvia gets actually support. Latvia gets uh, support from uh, from uh, France and from uh, Great Britain uh, through through the sea. They provide supplies, and British uh, British soldiers also fight on the land. 
and uh, in November starts those decisive uh, fights. I, it was November the 3rd was the decisive fight. And uh, finally, on November 11th, 1919, uh, the, the Vermont, uh, Vermont, Vermontian um, uh, army, if you can call it so, was defeated. And that is what we call, uh, uh, that, that's what we mark as Latvian in, uh, independence, freedom fighters, uh, um, Remembrance Day. So that is exactly one year after the World War uh, ended. Uh, so that's what we celebrate. But do you think that Latvia is independent at that time? Of course not. That's just one battle that was like the decisive battle that was won over Riga. So so what happens? They, uh, they force the, the Bermontian army actually again back until in uh, in the Jan in, in uh, what was it by the end of the year they they force it back here to the borders and um, expel them get get them out of the country but this but the Soviets are still here in this region which is called Latgala region so they have to work through and push the Soviets out of Latvia of the Latvian territory and uh, that happens uh, only. Uh, in, in January uh, of uh, 1920. So it's actually Latvia was fully independent uh, on, in the January of 1920 only. So uh, and then of course the World uh, War II started and uh, Latvia um, lost its in independence again. And it's difficult to, to tell again exactly when because there was the secret uh, Ribbentrop-Molotov Pact, which was uh, a, uh, which was dated of uh, 1939, but Latvia August, but uh, Latvia was actually taken over, annexed by the so uh, Soviet Union in 1940. So uh, that uh, that that uh, also. Uh, adds to the math to figure it out. And then, uh, of course, all the Soviet era, era, era years. And I remember when uh, how we uh, went in processions uh, for, for Latvian independence in 1988. I remember 1990. I remember when, uh, when the, we were watching, we were finally watching the TV to hear uh, to hear, uh, finally we were interested to hear what the so-called, I think it was something supreme uh, uh, Soviet of uh, Latvian Republic, is some, something like that, Soviet Latvian Republic, when they um, declared independence, it was in, nine, in August 4th. If I don't, if I remember correctly, of 1990, but but actually uh, the Soviet Union recognized Latvia's independence a year after in September of 1991. So uh, that's uh, do the math. But uh, tomorrow, uh, yes, it, it is Latvian uh, Independence uh, Day. The, uh, the 103rd Independence Day, as we call it, although Latvia can celebrate several Independence Days in its history. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted to, uh, to come and uh, talk about. I don't know how it worked. I don't see comments. I'll, I'll just check through my phone how I did it. Uh, I know that I did it in a very casual way. Okay, yeah, so let's see. Yeah, guys, if you have co uh, comments or questions, please, um, please comment. But uh, yeah, I don't um, have anything much to say. I just want to say uh, everybody who uh, who feels for Latvia, who has Latvia dear uh, to their heart. Happy Independence Day tomorrow. Uh, I'll light the I'll light the candle tomorrow for all the freedom fighters. Uh, if I'm uh, ever asked about uh, freedom uh, from whom, uh, and when uh, somebody asks on which side, uh, there are those those um, arguments about, for instance, Latvian freedom fighters, right? And uh, and on which uh, side uh, if, uh, their uh, our ancestors were. I, I can just share really quickly the story of my uh, of the brother of my uh, grandmother. 
who was uh, only 15 years old boy and it was uh, during these uh, these fights uh, back uh, where where uh, the freedom fighters were uh, moved back and forth, back and forth, and he was in a deep countryside helping uh, in August, uh, I think, uh, helping uh, with uh, to collect hay for for cattle, and he was taken. He was taken by uh, Russians to the army. He didn't have any sides. Of course, he he was politically neutral. He just tried to help his mother because his father had passed away. And uh, he was just helping his mother, a young boy, 15 years old. At that time, um, people were not as educated and, uh, and they had no clue what was going on. They just saw that somebody is coming and, and destroying their, their homes. And so he was taken in, uh, in the army. And uh, my, my great-grandmother just recognized that it was uh, the Russian language. But how would she know? Was it this guy here Ber uh, Ber from the Bermontians or was it from the Soviets? So when people fight about uh, uh, Russians, uh, talk about Russians or Germans or whatever, uh, we really need to use more precise language because it wasn't the Russians that... Uh, Yes, it wasn't the Russians, and this might be conflicting. It wasn't the Russians who did it to uh, to Latvians. Uh, it it was the system. It was the system. Whatever system you want to support, Soviet or monarchy or whatever, it was just there were innocent people caught between. Latvian people didn't even have any political inclination, as as I mentioned. The first government was composed of all kinds of political, uh, political opinion, uh, opinionated people, if I can say so. So yeah, um, that's that's just a part of the history. By the way, I mentioned at the beginning that uh, that uh, we can say that Lat the Latvian uh, army started from two hundred riflemen, and at the end of these freedom fights. Uh, freedom battles. There were 76,000 people in the Latvian army. And think of what percentage it is of the Latvian population after World War I. Aren't we an amazing nation? Yeah, with that, I will end today and uh, I'll be back soon. I hope you found this valuable. Bye bye. Now I'll try to close this down in this system, which I haven't worked with before. Okay, I found the button. All right. Uh, happy Independence Day, everybody who uh, understands English and who supports Latvia and who has Latvian heritage. Bye-bye.